Are you ready? <laughs> hey, it's Joel. We've got some tests to do. I used this um, 3D Gloop. 3D Gloop? On the OpenRC project. And it held extraordinarily well. Like crazy, crazy extraordinarily well. And what I want to do is test it versus epoxy and this super glue. I'm using this Goliath glue. Uh, because this was held together with epoxy. It split apart. I'm thinking we might be able to make this axle hold together with 3D Gloop. And then we've got some test pieces to see if it can withstand the full Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd! Hello again, everybody. Uh, so let's, let's go this side to this side here. I've got a camera set up right here. It's so you can see my hands and my, my doing stuff. I want to build this uh, an enclosure or like a, a system so I can put a camera like directly down. I think that'd be really cool. It's for another time. And then right here, we've got the parts that I want to put together. Here's the 3D glue. Here's the Goliath glue. Here's some Loctite epoxy. And this is some spare silicone from Punish Props Academy. It's great to uh, mix adhesives on because nothing sticks to it. So it dries, it cures, whatever, and then you just peel it off and you have yourself a blank silicone thing. Here's what we're gonna do. I want to put these together with the various attachment methods. So these are just these things I designed in Fusion 360. The idea is they can attach just like that. So what I wanna do is attach things right here just like that. And then once they're glued and adhered or cured or whatever, we're going to test them and I have an idea for the testing. It'll be, I will put my life on the line for this, I think, or at least my body parts, possibly broken bones. I don't know, we'll see. But what we need to do is prepare these really quick. I have some sandpaper right here, just some 220 grit and uh, ooh, probably one of the best tools in existence, a little burr remover. So what I wanna do is remove any of the elephant foot parts that I forgot to remove. Brilliant! Everything is ready. First, I want to do the Goliath glue. I think I have some accelerant. Is this the one that works? Nope. Bam. And let's first start with sanding these down. Shaking the table a little bit. There we go. That's a pretty good sanding right there. It looks like the middle. I probably should mention these are printed in Polymaker's Polymax. PLA, that might make a difference. For the super glue ones, uh, I will use this and this, put it together, let it hold, set it aside. For the epoxy and for the 3D gloop, I'm gonna use these clamps. Hashtag, give them the clamps. Here we go. Okay, it's a pretty generous helping of super glue right there if I do say so myself. Let's hope it doesn't stick to the paper. Boy, look at that squeeze out. I'm gonna go get a paper towel. These should be pretty well stuck together at this point. And thankfully I've got some brown paper down to make sure that I don't ruin stuff under my desk. There we go. That is, that is together. Uh, we should write on it. Green marker should show up on blue, right? CA for cycloanorogetic or whatever that word is. With the CA glue done, I think, uh, I think we should sand up another pair and let's do the epoxy. Put that down and it is one-to-one -one hardener and resin. Right. You always want to make sure you get it mixed up well because that's going to provide you with the best adhesion. Okay and we're going to get some squeeze out here which is fine. Now I don't want the piece to migrate much but I think it's at a point now where I can at least clamp it into shape. I'll tell you what I'll put some blue tape down. Put that one on top. We give them the clamps. There we go. That'll be good. And according to Loctite, it doesn't say how long to cure. I, I'm a, I was going to give it overnight. I'll give it overnight. Now, last but not least, is this 3D Gloop. So let's say 3D Gloop performs as well as super glue. That's, I think that's to be expected, but 3D Gloop performing as well as epoxy means that you have to look in the application method to find out which one you prefer. And how it works, I believe, is a chemical weld, which means it's not gonna stick to... Uh, okay, let's get out the clamp. So what we can do is take this 3D glue and brush it on, just like that. So it'll get into all the crevices and kind of creep down into where it's needed. And again, it's gonna create that chemical weld. I know that 
3D Gloop advertises itself as a build plate adhesive, as a print smoothing solution, and as an adhesion technique. I'm probably doing overkill, but... So uh, in the OpenRC project, I had adhesion that was good enough for final uh, within minutes. But what I will do is I will leave this in the clamp. We've got our epoxy, our 3D gloop, and our super glue all set. And so we'll leave those to go overnight, maybe a couple days, whenever I can get back to it next. And then we'll have some fun testing it out. So let's say you do have a part that did fail. Uh, so this is that axle from the OpenRC project. I ended up using the full one that G-Create printed for me and it worked out really well, but this is still a good use case. So if you look, the epoxy, it failed. It adhered to one side or the other, but it didn't adhere fully to the model, meaning that it was only as good as sticking to itself. I know we used some super glue to hold it together as well, but if I can get this, uh, this epoxy off, I don't see why I couldn't sand it down and maybe try to adhere it with some 3D glue. It's worth a shot. Because it's a chemical weld, you want to cover the entire face so that all the parts stick together. So now we can bring it together. All right, well, I'll tell you what. These are going to set. This is going to set. I'm going to go get something to eat. I'll see you in a little bit or tomorrow. Later. I'll see you later. Later. Ooh, it's been a few days. Mmm. Like I said, it's been a few days. Let's see. My mom had a birthday. Um, my daughter plays on a softball team that my wife coaches, and they won their bracket at a tournament. That's fun. More importantly, though, all of this stuff had plenty of time to cure. Yes, there's crap on my desk because I also cleaned up a bit. But for now, let's talk about these. Each one's marked. So this is CA for cyclanoacrylate super glue. This is EP for epoxy. This, uh, this is the, this is the 3D glue right here. This is what we're testing. It did walk just a little bit. You can see that it didn't line up. Perfect. Mm. But it's cured. It's had days to cure. Just like this. Look at that. Urgh. Okay. That's good too. Sweet. So here's what I did. I went to the Home Depot and I picked up these uh, quarter inch bolts. The idea was, well, what I could do is put it right through here, just like that, and then nut it from the other side. Cool. But what I could do is attach some chain on either side and then, and then nut it down so it's nice and tight. And that would work really, really well. And then I could do the same on this side. And then I could try to pull it apart or use force or apply hashtag the full Joel. But I also picked up these U-bolts. I was just gonna say they look like U's. So I guess it's proper to call them U-bolts. I got these so that the arc was long enough so that it wasn't squishing and pulling up on the sides too much. We actually have a decent uh, attachment point there. So then what we'll be able to do is try to pull these apart. And I know from testing experience and from internet comments, this isn't perfect testing. I know that. But just as before, we're going to apply the same testing method to each of our three specimens. And the goal is simple to see how and where it breaks. Is it going to break at the glue joint or is the filament itself going to break on either side. But it's late now, and it's supper time. My wife made burgers. They're tasty, and it's dark outside. So we resume tomorrow, where we test to make sure one of these, hopefully, can support the full Joel. We have to do it outside, where it's safe. That's exciting. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Hey, we're outside and we're gonna hook up this uh, this stuff to the, it's called the trapeze. It's really sunny outside and we've got this camera and we've got that camera by Riley. Hi, Riley. We're starting with the super glue one first, super glue. And then I'll be able to hold on right here with all my might, hopefully and not punch myself in the face, which I may punch myself in the face. Oh wait, no, no, no. I'm not gonna have to punch myself in the face. That's right, because I figured out how to make the trapeze work. Instead of punching myself in the face, I'm gonna knock myself in the head if this doesn't work. Look at that, huh? 
That'll hang like right there. I do have my crane scale available. We're, we're just gonna see if these can hold me, the full Joel, but if they all hold me, then we'll have to use this and uh, more weight to see if we can get it to fail. I have no idea what to expect. What do you, what do you think, mommy? My wife doesn't think they're all gonna hold. I'm gonna hurt myself, aren't I? Okay, we're gonna get the high speed ready, and then we're gonna go. We'll get a little higher. That'll help. Okay. Kinda scared. Oh! <laughs> what was that? Did it already break? Was that the plastic? Wow, that broke really fast. Good thing you didn't sit on it. Good thing I didn't sit on it or else my bum would be on the floor, wouldn't it? So now we gotta load, now we're loading, that was the super glue. Now we're gonna load up the epoxy. Okay, this is uh, epoxy. <laughs> it just, it just sheared. This is 3D gloop, and it uses, uh, it's almost like a chemical weld. It's rather than having something between two things keeping it together, it welds them together. It kind of melts them together. So it should hold me. Okay, this is with 3D gloop. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Wow, okay. Okay, it's kind of scared now. Oh, I have my glasses on. Here, just in case. Here, take my glasses. <laughs> Hi, Maya. It held. So the super glue didn't hold, and the epoxy didn't hold. They broke pretty straight away, didn't they? Okay, David, come here. We're not gonna swing. We're just gonna hold on to it, okay? Oh yeah, put your hat on, business mode. Jump up. Okay, ready? <laughs> I wanna try. Wow. Pull mommy, pull mommy and pull daddy. Boy, I did it. I didn't expect that. Come on, mommy. Nope. It's on a countdown. Four. Ready, ready? Mm -hmm. Two, <laughs> one, go. <laughs> It hit me in the nose, so I'm glad I took my glasses off. Is my nose gonna get more red? <laughs> you don't wanna wear mine? Wow, that was, wow. Okay, and this, <laughs> look at this. This was a failure of the material. The glue or the weld didn't fail. The material itself failed. So the others, you could tell that the adhesives themselves failed, but this one, the material failed. So the adhesion itself be didn't fail. Wow, it held, it held the full Joel and it held the full, the full Mickey. It held the full, eye. I mean, for a little bit. Am I bleeding anywhere? That's good. I think it came down on my nose. We'll be able to tell. Well, that's it. That, that was our test of 3D gloop versus epoxy versus Cyanoacrylate, which is super glue, and it looks like uh, super glue is great. It's easy to use, doesn't hold as well. Epoxy, a little bit harder to use. You have to mix it up, but it has a stronger adhesion. 3D Gloop itself seems to be super easy to apply. It's got a little bit of a stink to it. You should probably be safe with the gloves or a respirator or something when applying it, but it held the full me. It held me and the kids. Uh, it held me and my wife for a bit, and then the material itself failed. Wow, I am impressed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to help each other more. I love you guys. See you on the after the five. As always, high five. <laughs>